Plays it in. We haven't seen Ryan Seymour after taking that big hit. Is look at Trombley going right after Fontan. He's the man who hits Seymour, and it's all breaking loose in the corner. Wanzelak out there, six foot six, Poirier, Trombley. No fighters up there actually. Is you know the goaltenders are going to go at each other. At center ice, Luongo and Ull dropping the glove. There we go. There's Martin Ull. We haven't seen this one in a while, Paul. Right over the Eagles' crest as all the players are down in the corner. Here with the right hand, there's the Wolf. Luongo with a couple of the south. Toe to toe. Wolf back going back now. A right hand and he puts his man down. Luongo covering up. And there's a little bit of blood coming from Luongo as he was smashed a few times and we still have a bigger rain event down the left corner. Vino and Poirier going at it in the far corner. You're going to have to get Vino. Vino's going to have to get a step ladder. I guess it's Poirier. And where's Jonathan Tremblay? Tremblay is all over uh, Fontaine, I believe. As Sawyer and Fournier paired up, Hodgson can fight. He has a hold of uh, Bertrand right now. And the goaltender, Luongo, down in the heap at dead center ice. He appeared to be okay for a while there, Paul, but he just sort of uh, slumped down. Well, and you can see that's what Tremblay's all about. He went right after Fontaine, who put a clean hit on Ryan Seymour along the boards. Well, he did that, Dan. We saw that a couple times in there, in our highlights. They're still going in the corner, Vino and Poirier. Man, that Vino, he, I'll tell you, he's got the staying power. We saw it against Gibson. And Poirier with the right hand cock. I don't know if he wants to go at it anymore. Probably now trying to get at Vino. How'd you like to be taught to matter to have to sort all this out? You know, probably he's going to get the heave all he better. That's right, Dan. There's going to be perhaps 10 guys at this hockey game. There'll be the first two initial fights staying. The rest of them are gone. And let's just hope Fabio Luongo's all right. So season's beatings from Martin Uhl on to Fabio Luongo at center ice. But they shouldn't make a jump. Look at probably trying to get back. That could be a 10-gamer. He's back on the ice after being helped off. I don't think Trombley really cares about things like that, to be honest with you. He's, he loves to throw them. And look at the off-ice officials grabbing on him. They shouldn't uh, probably do that either. <laughs> wow. Things going crazy. Luongo, again, he's still down at center ice, and he appeared to be okay, but then just kind of gave out. And he really hasn't moved in a while. As Fontaine is uh, in the penalty box, pointing at the Agony Bathers bench. I'm not sure who he's singling out. Well, let's just hope that Luongo's all right. And it looks like he's in... Hopefully he didn't hit his head on the ice. and He's being attended to by three people at once. And oh, we just hope that that he's going to be all right, Dan. I mean, well, let's take a look at how it all started. Again, uh, he's getting some good help there. The Trombley went after Charles Fontaine to the left of the uh, Cape Breton goal. There's 34 Trombley. That's Fontaine. Again, Fontaine, he uh, took a run. Well, didn't take a run. A good clean hit on Ryan Seymour, actually. Look at the Eagles players coming in to help out. And look at that <laughs> left hand there from Hoff. Wants a luck getting in there. The six foot six Corey. And there's Luongo and Martin Uhl. We'll see if we can see. It was uh, fairly even to start. And he's definitely catches him with one. He'll come up underneath with one Uhl. And he'll catch him. Yeah, it's a lot of gear on to be throwing right oh hands. Oh, my goodness. He hits him there and just hopefully. Maybe, yeah. Maybe it was at the end that he did he uh, hit his head on the ice but first, but a lot of a lot of blood there, and uh, hopefully he'd be going to be all right. So again, Jonathan Tremblay, as they bring the stretcher out for Luongo. Again, you'll see this uh, in a lot of situations, it's just a precautionary measure. But uh, Jonathan Tremblay really starting things there. 202 penalty minutes coming into this. Dixon a lot. And uh, an eagle player here as well. And there's a lot of help there for Luongo. We have uh, perhaps, could be a shoulder, Dan. And uh, we're going to have to just wait and see as he collapsed at center ice after a very spirited affair with Martin Uhl. So Uhl has been ejected from the game. And Proto will be in, in a relief in a relief of Uhl, and we still haven't seen Adam Russo go to get any gear on either, Dan. No, he's just standing there at the door, actually, but uh, obviously he knows he's coming in, but you'd think he'd stretch a bit. And again, the uh, just the way the standings go.
The top three teams in each division get the bye. The bottom three teams are out. In the last few years, only it's been two teams that have not made the playoffs, and the top uh, well, the top couple of teams get a bye. So just one more team that doesn't make it, but I think that makes it that much better and that much tighter four teams like Bathurst and, and even Halifax and uh, Victoriaville and Quebec. There's a lot of teams grouped together at the bottom of the standings. There's Martin Uhl, Vincent Zore behind him in the, the gray suit with the uh, wine tie. There's Nathan Vino. Great look at those players. And uh, Pro Toe, I guess that is off down to the left, uh, trying to get set to get back on the ice as they've taken out a, another stretcher, a different stretcher as uh, the ambulance is here for Fabio Luongo. Well, remember last year, Dan, where the two conference winners got the bye and really uh, the Halifax Moose had, had a tough go last year I mean Quebec was in their in their division and Quebec lost early out as well Quebec hosted the Memorial Cup last year Bathurst and Halifax went to game seven at the Halifax Forum that was a very tiring series you get through that who do you see the Yankee or you see sorry the Bacamo Dracar another game seven and all, all along in the other conference, you see uh, Gatineau, or at that time Hull, the Hull Olympic, running through with a 12-1 record as the Mooseheads really struggled in two game sevens, and that one was tough. So this year should be a lot e more even and give the teams with the better records a, a little better chance. Well, uh, again, Fabio Luongo is the player that you can't see surrounded by so many staff members, almost a dozen and hopefully he'll be okay. We're going to step aside with the Eagles leading 4-0. Here at Center 200, you're watching Quebec Major Junior League Hockey on East Lake Television. Everyone, as you can see, Fabio Luongo is on a stretcher and on his way out. The fans just gave him a standing ovation and uh, are still applauding. So, young Luongo on the ice uh, for a long time. And, Paul, I know that... Uh, Jonathan Tremblay started that fight, and you have some of the information on what he's going to get, penalty-wise, uh, what he's going to get for a suspension, who knows, but what do you know about this game? Well, for this game, Jonathan Tremblay gets two minutes for cross-checking, five for fighting, and two game misconducts. And the rest of the Acadie Bathurst penalties, Andre Duantaluk, five for fighting in a game misconduct, Fabio Luongo, five in a game misconduct, and number 39, Philippe Poirier, five in a game misconduct, Chris Hodge and Eric Fournay get a ten-minute misconducts. Now for the Cape Breton Screaming Eagles, Gregory Hoff, five minutes for fighting in a game of misconduct. Martin Uhl, five for fighting in a game of misconduct. Nathan Vino, five for fighting in a game of misconduct. And Te Mikael Tessier and Jean-Claude Sawyer get uh, ten-minute misconducts. And there's Francois Proteau, who, Dan, I thought may have started this game tonight. He has three wins on 